Hi, I'm Merle Harmon, along with Mike Hapner. Mike, Don Shula said a little while ago, this is a must-win situation for the Dolphins. He was serious. He certainly was serious. If he wins today, Los Angeles loses later on this afternoon. He'll have the home field advantage in the playoffs, and he won't have to see any snow. If he wants to win today, the important thing is for number 37, Andre Franklin, to have a big day. Because Miami has run the ball better than they have thrown it in this strike-shortened season, and they must run it well, and number 37 is their offense. The Dolphins have great respect for the Colts, who gave them a very tough time in the final game before the strike. And, of course, the Colts wound up with a tie with the Green Bay Packers. They're hungry for a win. Coach Frank Cush believes he's two drafts away. That means two years from now, Colt fans can start thinking about the playoffs. He said at quarterback with Mike Pagel, which leads one to believe if the Colts get the rights to John Elway, they'll trade him away for a couple of veterans who can help the team right now. Before the game, Mike Hefner had a rare opportunity to talk to both coaches. I'm with the two head coaches for today's game, and first, Don Shula, I'm going to give you the power to change one thing in 1982, now that it's 83. What would you change? Well, in the coaching profession, you never have that luxury, so I really haven't given it a lot of thought. But uh, I'm happy about many of the things that have happened and disappointed that uh, we haven't come as far as I'd like to have come offensively. All right, and I've got Frank Kutch on the other side. Uh, can, if you could change one thing, Coach, I know you'd like to have one win at least. Well, yes, one win eliminating the strike certainly was detrimental to us, and I think probably devastating to the entire NFL. But I would say this, that we have made progress defensively, but unfortunately offense, that's probably our biggest disappointment. All right, Don, now you're back to 83, and I know you're looking for the home field advantage. What would you wish for in the 83 uh, playoff season? Well, of course, every game is important, and, and this game is very important to us, too, because uh, uh, we had two big wins, uh, one over the Jets and one over Buffalo in the last two weeks, and we got to get it done today and hope that we get some help from San Diego over the Raiders because that could set, up, set us up in good shape for the playoffs. All right, Don, and I know you're not in the playoffs, Coach, so 83 uh, means draft choices and uh, a new season. Yes, definitely so. We're looking forward to the next season. Of course, I think, as I said earlier, we made a great deal of progress. And, of course, with the anticipation of the draft coming up, that we should be a lot better ball club next year. On behalf of NBC Sports, I want to wish both of you a happy new year and much success in 83. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. And it's happy holidays and a happy new year to all from NBC Sports. Uwe Van Schaman will kick off for Miami as Baltimore has won the toss, obviously will receive. Going back deep, Zachary Dixon, Matt Bouger, 85, and Randy McMillan. And the kickoff will carry back to the one-yard line where it is taken by Dixon. Dixon gets near the 20, stopped at about the 19-yard line, and knocked off his feet by Paul Langford, a cornerback, with the defensive unit. And so the Miami Dolphins will put the ball in play first with this offensive backfield, Mike. And I'll tell you what, Mike Pagel is the man here, and they can forget about John Elway. And the wideouts. Tim Sherwin is probably a fine young tight end on his way to going places. Who's the key in the offensive line? Uh, maybe uh, somebody in the draft this year. How about Dave Remington from Nebraska? Not too bad. Mike Pagel, first-year man, Arizona State. Sends Butler in motion, goes to the run. McMillan off his own right tackle for 10. He has stopped just short the 30-yard line. It was Curtis Dickey, rather. And it might be that uh, he's just an inch or so short of the first down. They're going to line it up, take a look, and it'll be second down and inches to go. Here's the play. Hart and Huff, the offensive guard and tackle on the right side, have been much maligned by their head coach and the papers and everybody here. Right there, they opened a giant hole, and that really helped. Baltimore in possession. We have just started. That's Butler in motion, back to the right side. Dickey again. Dickey for the first down, out to the 33. And Burn, Denherter, A.J. Dewey, or Dewey, if you will. Dewey. <laughs> as you said, Merle, he came in as Dewey, he's going out as Dewey. <laughs> Here's the defensive line. <laughs> and now to the offensive backfield uh, with uh, Curtis Dickey, Randy McMillan. There are the two running backs. Number 83, Tim Sherwin, comes out to the left side. He's the tight end, and you're looking at Ray Butler split wide to the left. First and ten. McMillan, the fullback, for a yard or so to the 35. It'll be second down and about eight. 
Here's the defensive front three. And Baumhauer, the best nose tackle in football right now. And the tallest front three in football. <laughs> really? The killer bees. Look at all those bees, will you? Linebacker, Brzezinski, Roan Gordon. Roan and Gordon having great seasons, Merle, and that really helps the defense. And the Blackwood brothers. Yes, and Don McNeil is back off injury, and I think that's made the biggest difference in the defense for Miami. Second down eight. Sherwin, the tight end in motion. Pagel trapped behind the line, but he can run the ball. He did not get back to the line of scrimmage, or if he did and he didn't, he is dropped back on the 34-yard line by Doug Betters, number 75, the defensive right end out of Nevada, Reno, in his fifth year with the Dolphins. They spent two draft choices on number 59, Bob Brudzinski. There's the reason they spent two draft choices on him. A great blitz, Pagel never had a chance. Now the nickel defense comes in for Miami. Fulton Walker, 41, replaces Brzezinski. Well, here's, here's where Baltimore has the problem. Throwing on third down. They're just not good enough to do this. They go, throws back over the middle. Hits Curtis Dookie coming out of the backfield. He will be close to a first down. Pending where they mark the ball, Mike Kozlowski, the free safety, number 40, came up with a tackle. And it's a first down for the Colts by a little bit. That's what they need to do. They've got to be able to throw the football against this Miami defense. There they got away with it. Pagel, again, throwing short. The control patterns are what Frank Cush wants his team to do. You get the back out of the backfield, Curtis Dickey, and he gets just enough for the first down. Butler comes split wide to the left. Frank Cush, oh, does he want to win today? Butler now goes in motion. First and 10 on the 44 of the Colts. The pitch to Dickey behind McMillan's block on the corner. But he did not get the second block that he needed. Lyle Blackwood and Don McNeil ran him out of bounds. It will be second down and about 10. He just barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe gained a half yard. In the earlier meeting this year on September 19th, Miami beat the Colts 24 to 20 in Miami. That was the last game before the strike. And Frank Cush felt that his club was in peak condition at that stage because they had worked so hard to get where they were. The Dolphins said they, I, we kept waiting for them to quit in the heat, and they never did. Butler in motion. Dickey on the tailback pitch, and he is to the 47. Well, I'll be very, very surprised today if the Baltimore running backs get outside on the Miami defense. As I said, Gordon and Roan are playing just tremendous football. And against the 3-4, you don't run wide. They're just too fast at linebacker. And those front three up there are also quick. Now the Colt defense has been switched as Gordon goes out, Brzezinski goes out. Let's see, I believe they have six defensive backs on the field now. Here's that third and long situation again. Here comes the rush, bought off by the offensive line. And this time, Curtis Dickey was trying to run before he got the football. Hit him in a tough place. I know running backs aren't supposed to be receivers, but in these days, you've got to catch the ball on third down, hit him in a tough spot right in the hands. It is fourth down seven, and the punting unit comes on. Ron Stark, who has averaged 44.3 yards per kick, the second top punter of the AFC and third in all the NFL, will kick it away to Tom Vigorito. Tommy, a second-year man from Virginia. Left oh. footer bangs it deep. He kicks a ball out of sight, doesn't he? A tremendous athlete. Ron Stark from Florida State. And more about him later on. That's only a 52-yarder. And so the Miami Dolphins will take the ball at their own 20-yard line as they come on with the offense for the first time today. And so the Miami Dolphins bring the offensive unit on for the first time this afternoon, headed by David Woodley at quarterback. Woodley, a third-year man out of LSU, 841 yards in the air, eight interceptions, two touchdowns. He's also rushed for 205 yards and two touchdowns. The Dolphins, after their seventh win of the year, James Burrows, number 45, the left cornerback. 
You know, Merle, last week, Donnell Thompson, number 99, was standing on Dan Fouts' toes all afternoon. Look at how well Don Shula has scouted this club. He knows he gets the pressure there. Right away, he goes to the screen pass to negate the pass rush of 99 Donaldson. Second down, seven. Set. Ronnie Lee has come in at uh, tight end now, and Nathan has gone out, so it's a double tight end situation for the Dolphins. Second and seven on the 23. The quarterback shook it loose. Frank Cush looking for a break like that, hoping that Lightning might strike early for his Baltimore Colts. Now we will see if they can take advantage of it. Merle, I talked about how well Coach Don Shula had scouted the Colts. How about Frank Cush scouting Miami, knowing that 37 Andre Franklin would be the main force in his offense? There were five Colts around him, forced to fumble. We'll see it right here. They know that 37 is the key to their offense. They banged the ball out. Was that Hatchet that knocked it out? Whoever. And Fletcher Jenkins, it looks like, no, somebody else got it. First and 10 for the Colts at the 17-yard line of the Dolphins. Pagel, play action. Spun down by number 59, Bob Brzezinski. Six-year veteran from Ohio State by way of the Los Angeles Rams in a trade that Mike Hafner alluded to a moment ago. A loss on the play makes it second down and 15. Dolphins uh, are losing Kim Camper. There he is on the sidelines. He's been injured. We don't know what it is, but we'll find out for you, and that'll hurt him. He's a good pass rusher, too. Second down, almost 15 to the 21. Time the handoff goes to McMillan, the fullback, the second year man from Pittsburgh. Not too much down the 19 yard line. Richard Bishop, number 72, the nose tackle, the seven year veteran from Louisville, making the stop. Now the play is being brought in by Bernard Henry, number 88. By the way, Henry was the pass catching teammate of Mike Pagel at Arizona State. Walker has come on. Five defensive backs are on the field now for Miami on third down and 13. And their Burton Den Herder is in in place of Bo Camper. He hadn't played much this season. They asked him to come out of retirement. He did the right thing. We'll tell you why in a little bit. Pagel, deep drop. Rolling, throwing. Butler overshooting. Double coverage back there on him. But a little bit long in the pass. He might have had a shot if he could have threaded the needle. He got some pressure from Den Herder, and you might say why he came back, Merle. <laughs> a lot of money involved, huh? How much? $750,000? No, no, 330000 but that's What's a lot the of difference money? <laughs> when you're getting into that category? <laughs> by way of the new contract and all the bonuses and everything, by Vern Den Herder coming out of retirement, he's going to be able to put a lot of hogs on those farms of his up in Iowa. And if Bo Camper is hurt severely, it's nice that they got him to come back Dan out of retirement. For the field goal now, Dan Miller for the field goal try from the 28 yard line. That's close for him. 38-yard effort, not good. Hooked it off to the left. So Dan Miller, the rookie from Miami of Florida, wide to the left. And the Colts will come up with the football for the second time this afternoon. No score in the game from Baltimore, and we'll be right back. By Mazda, who invites you to experience the all-new Mazda 626. By Gillette Atra Razor, the twin blade razor that pivots for a close, comfortable shave. And by Holiday Inn, the only hotel chain that gives you a no excuses room guarantee. Here in Baltimore, I'm Merle Harmon with Mike Hafner. There is no score between the Colts, who are trying to win their first game of the year. They have one tie. Don Shula's team is playoff bound, but this game is a big one for him today. If the Colts, if he can beat the Colts, he is ensured of at least a strong possibility of having the playoff games in Miami. Of course, we have to wait for the outcome of the Raider game on the coast today. Woodley to Franklin, the big pullback. Out to the 25, where it'll be second and five. Sanders Shriver, 54, the seven-year veteran linebacker for the Colts, makes the tackle, and here's the offensive backfield. And the offense is right at the bottom there. It says fullback, 37, Andre Franklin, he's the man. The wideouts. Bruce Hardy's a fine tight end, but we'll see a lot of rows today there. He's their big deep threat. John Geisler, Kuchenberg. 
course, Newman is hurt. Kuchenberg is in there for him. He's also going to play in the Pro Bowl for him. It's nice for Big Cooch to get that. Yes, sir. Second down, five. Cephalo back in motion. Woodley, lots and lots of time. Woodley heading for the marker. He's about a yard short of a first down as Wisniewski, the middle linebacker, number 69, chased him out of bounds. And again, you see Donnell Thompson, number 99, and Johnny Cooks, number 96. Here's one of the reasons Woodley starts the game. You need a quarterback that can move. Don Strock says, I'm the kind of guy who likes his friends. I stay in the pocket. And when Woodley can't find a receiver, his biggest asset is his ability to gain yards when he's scrambling with a football. Here's a prime example. Strock would have been thrown for a loss. Woodley gets almost up to a first down. There are three tight ends in now for the Miami Dolphins. Joe Rose, Ronnie Lee, and Bruce Hardy. Watch out for Rose, Merlin. Mer <laughs> Bennett is now the fullback. And the pitch goes to number 37 under Franklin again. Franklin out to about the 32. He's got the first down. For the first down across the 31. Glasgow making the stop of the last play as we check the three-man front for the Colts. Two out of three can play. I won't tell you who the other one is. <laughs> <laughs> You're not very nice. Linebackers. Johnny Cooks and Greg Braceland have really played well. Cooks, one of the second draft choices. And you like Jeff Burroughs in the backfield, or uh, James Burroughs, don't you? James Burroughs, I saw early in the season. He was First second string. He's going to be a great one in the NFL. First and ten for the Dolphins at the 31-yard line of Miami. Dwight Stevenson up over the ball. Cephalo in motion. Whistle stopping play. Did they run out of time? They certainly did. Down to zero on the 32nd clock. Delay of the game. Offense number 16. You know what that comes from, Merle. Don Shula calls all the plays for Woodley, and it takes extra time when you got to run a guy in and run a guy out. So Miami will lose five and we'll check scores in the second quarter. The Buffalo Bills and the New England Patriots both are in the playoff picture, but only one after the game. New York Jets, do you believe that? Kansas City over the Jets. Oh, they went to sleep. And Philadelphia leading the New York Giants. Washington already in. St. Louis in. First down 15 for the Dolphins. That's a, big, low emotion. that's a big score. The Jets score. That could put a home field advantage for Miami. Franklin brought down by Barry Cross, 55, the inside linebacker from Alabama. So they picked up the yardage just about. If they lost, it'll be second down and 10. And that would be, you know, we were talking about that today. The Jets, who are, who are just absolutely talent loaded. Going into that game in uh, Kansas City, and not much of a crowd out there today. Nothing for the Chiefs to get excited about. Something for Pittsburgh fans to be excited about, though. Leading Cleveland 13 to 7 in the second quarter in Pittsburgh. Rich Diana is now in the backfield. On second down. Woodley completes it for a first down to the 44-yard line to number 89, Nat Moore, the number three draft choice of 1974. James Burroughs had the coverage and got him out of bounds. This receiver has been a stranger this year in Miami. Miami fans are used to Nat Moore being a big force, but he said this last year, three receivers went into two very well. This year it doesn't go at all. Cephalo and, and Duriel Harris have been getting all the time. That play good for 11 yards. Houston trailing Cincinnati. Of course, the Bengals are playoff bound. Chicago and Green Bay. The Bears just a little bit of a chance. Woodley, don't go long. He's got a man wide open this time. Harris, and Harris is out of bounds on the 11. Nesby Glasgow, number 25. The free safety finally gets Harris out of bounds after a 46-yard pickup. Merrill, here's that young defense. Somebody made a mistake. It was either Burroughs or Glasgow. It was a zone. Somebody who's supposed to have deep coverage. Duriel Harris was wide open. He's down there waving his hand saying, somebody throw it to me. It was either Burroughs or Glasgow that made the mistake on the deep outside in the zone. And here, oh, why didn't I get open like that when I was playing? <laughs> That's ridiculous. Well, you were down there working out yesterday, and you were getting open fairly regularly. <laughs> Daryl Harris putting wide to the right side. Franklin behind the quarterback, David Woodley. Touchdown! Well, Nat Moore. 
seven-yard touchdown pass. He's got a split finger, but Matt Moore, when he gets his hands on the ball, split finger or not, chances are he's going to hang on to it. Again, one of the strangest things all year, Nat Moore has been on the bench while Cephalo and Duriel Harris have been the stars. Nat has not been seen much, but today he's already been a force, a touchdown and a first down catch. So Nat Moore in his ninth year out of Florida, 5'9", 188 pounds, puts Miami on the scoreboard, and now Strzok will hold it for Von Schaumann. Von Schaumann, 17 out of 18 on the PATs, make him 18 out of 19. So Miami jumps out to a 7-0 lead with 6 minutes and 7 seconds left to go in the first period. Miami draws first blood, leading 7-0. Rules eliminating the possibility of bumping the receiver. You want to get him one on one. Here, Derek Hatchett has Nat Moore one on one, and if you can't hit him, you cannot keep him out of the inside, and it's a big touchdown for Miami. Now, Zachary Dixon is back deep, the four year veteran from Temple. He was picked up at the Dolphins on waivers from Philadelphia, and it'll be Dixon from the eight. He is covered at about the 22, and I think I saw a flag thrown in, I did. Number 34 is, uh, uh, let's see, Vince Heplin, number 88, was down on the coverage, and the penalty is gonna come up against the Baltimore Colts. The referee today is Chuck Heverling. Gordon Walls, the umpire, head linesman, Ray Dodez. Line judge Dale Orem, back judge Al Jury, side judge Bill Quinby, and the field judge is Charlie Mustard. Merle, the coaches in the National Football League are going to have to do a better job on their special teams. This flag is falling far Billy too often. block on the return by number 49. First down. And it's a simple block. They're just they're pushing him in the back, and it costs them 15 yards every time. So Cliff Odom is guilty of the foul, and it's first and 10 for the Colts at their own 12-yard line. Pagel has Curtis Dickey and Randy McMillan in the backfield. Curtis Dickey, Randy McMillan rather. Dickey out there as a blocker. He gets out to about the 22. Gordon, the linebacker, Blackwood, that's Lyle Blackwood, 42, on the tackle on Randy McMillan. You know, one of the tough things for the Colts is having to come from behind. You're a young team, and if you're going to be throwing the football a lot, or trying to get outside and run, you're going to make mistakes. And they have to now play catch-up football, and we'll just hope that Frank Bush's youngsters don't make the mistakes that really gets this game into a blowout situation. After McMillan's nine-yard pickup, Pagel goes to the run to McMillan again as he dies for the first down, out near the 22. Mike Pagel, five touchdowns, five interceptions, 1,146 yards in the air, the number four draft choice of the Colts. He had played college ball for Frank Cush at Arizona State. And Frank said, our offense isn't very good. Our defense is, but he's, the problems on offense will make it very difficult if they're going to come back against Miami. So the sticks are brought out to see if the Colts have earned the first down. Any part of the ball there, that shy. The Colts opened the season with a loss to the New England Patriots and then played the Dolphins very tough on that last game before the strike, losing 24-20. After the strike, they had to take on the Jets. Frank Cush was telling, telling us yesterday as uh, Mike and I visited with him at the Colts camp. He said, boy, what an awful thing to have to do after an eight-week strike play the New York Jets. And they really got swamped, 37 to nothing. Now the talent was about 21 points apart before they stepped on the field. Frank Cush was also very pleased with uh, the progress of his team up to the strike. Third down and an inch. McMillan first down by plenty, out to the 26. So the Dolphins keep going. Ernest Rowan, 55, the right inside linebacker and defensive captain with help from Don McNeil. Make the tackle. 63 Hudson, 79 Senate. Two youngsters that have come into this program late. They haven't been blocking well for their whole time here, but that time they opened it up and got the first down. Butler to the left side. Split wide. Matt Booza to the right. 7 0 Miami. We have four minutes, nine seconds to go in the first quarter. Pago, bang away to Booza. 
rookie from California. Lyle Blackwood, number 42, a 10-year veteran from TCU, had the coverage on the play. Lyle Blackwood has been a tremendous asset to the Miami Dolphins, and yet the Dolphins picked him up as a free agent when apparently nobody wanted him. I think he uh, discovered in his life that he wanted to be a football player. He's got his brother playing next to him. That really helped. Plus, Mr. Orange Parker's not a bad defensive coordinator. No, sir. Second down, 10. The ball in the Baltimore 26. Pagel had the ball knocked out of his hands, and the Dolphins have recovered it on the 20-yard line. Right there. Now he pulls it down. Then the ball is knocked out by Den Herter. And it was a fumble and a very good call and another tough break for the young Colts. So the Dolphins with Stevenson at center. Kuchenberg and Taves, the guards. Kiesler and Loxo, the tackles. Take over at the 20. <laughs> Franklin powering his way behind Kiesler and Kuchenberg. Stopped by Greg Braceland, the right side linebacker, and he got down to about the 17-yard line. I like for it Dan Herter, but it was better that knocked the ball out of his hand, not Dan Herter. Don Shula was presented with his 200th win last Monday night against the Buffalo Bills. Won his first game as a coach in 1963 over San Francisco. As a coach of the Colts, Franklin almost trapped behind the line, finally is cut down. He was being pursued by Barry Krause, the linebacker, and then Greg Braceland came over to help out. And again, Frank Cush and his defensive uh, coaches know that Andre Franklin is the key. And again, they are keying on 37, and look what happens. There's two Colts right on top of him and three or four more waiting for him. Not hard to scout the offense for Miami when it comes to the running game. Third down, coming up for the Dolphins. Harris split wide to the left side as they do go into the shotgun and Cepelo to the right. Woodley firing for the end zone incomplete. Joe Rose lost his footing down there. Larry Anderson had the coverage. Rose was looking back trying to find a flag somewhere, but he tipped over his own feet, Merle. anybody around he could accuse was there that's right he was looking for somebody to point at he couldn't find anybody so on fourth down and the Dolphins leading by seven and I think Don Shaman will go for a 35 yard field goal with Don Strzok holding here's a guy who really benefited from the strike world Louis Von Shaman 35 yards out it is good. And the Dolphins jump in front now 10 to nothing in the first quarter. Two minutes, 38 seconds left to go in the first period as Uwe von Schaumann kicks the field goal. And it's the 14th of 19 tries this year. 35-yard field goal for the Dolphins. We'll kick it away as Dixon is deep for the reception. And that one's going to come up a little bit short as Dixon feels it at the 12. Zachary Dixon to the 32. And Ron Hester makes the tackle, a 20-yard return. Hester thought he had a touchdown the other night, didn't he? Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> Recovered a fumble in the end zone. But the play had been uh, called dead. Called dead. And Ron got up, holding the ball up. Maybe some other time. Yes, he'll get his chance. Now the Colts will really have problems, Merle. They're down 10 points. They've got to throw the football, the one thing they haven't done well all year. Mike Pagel at quarterback. Art Schleister probably will play quite a bit today. That's Butler in motion. McMillan turning the corner and being knocked out of bounds in the 38-yard line. Lyle Blackwood, 42. Come it up. Gerald Small, 48. Also over there. And so we will have a second down and about four with two minutes, 23 seconds to go in the first quarter. 
Kim Bocamper, again, we said was injured, and the report is he's been x-rayed. He has a bruised hip, probably will not play the rest of the day. The reason for that, Miami's going on to the playoffs. If somebody from the Colts gets hurt, they'll probably be back in playing. Curtis Dickey getting the first down of the 45. Lyle Blackwood, the free safety, has to stop him. So Curtis Dickey, the former All-American from Texas A&M, comes up with uh, the first down. Buffalo leading New England by a score of 13 to 3. Ferguson has hit Butler on a 22-yard touchdown pass in that ball game. Jay Randolph and Bob Greasy are seeing a good one. And uh, at Kansas City, how about this? The Chiefs with Nick that? Lowry kicking two field goals, Kenny throwing two touchdowns, pounding the Jets. Jets forgot that they had to play one more game before the playoffs. Jets the second most potent team offensively in the AFC. That pass incomplete intended for Booza. The coverage by Gerald Small, number 48. Five-year veteran from San Jose State. It'll be second down, 10 with a minute 37 to go in the first quarter. Booza should have caught that one. That's tough on Pagel. He's got it rough enough anyway. When he throws a good pass, he gets it dropped. Joe Donello has just kicked a 32-yard field goal to bring the New York Giants within one of the Philadelphia Eagles. Second down and 10. We'll try to keep you updated on the scores because uh, they're all important. Oh, boy. They are today, indeed. The draw to McMillan. And he blows his way down to the 45 of Miami, and that looks like a first down. A 10-yard pickup. Ernest Grohn, the defensive captain, who leads the team in tackles this year, makes the stop. The strength of the Colt offense is the running game with McMillan and Dickey. It was a giant hole on the draw play. The unfortunate thing is, is a running game doesn't help you when you're down by 10 points in the first quarter. First down and 10. Boozes splits wide to the left side. This time it is Cleveland Franklin carrying the ball for about two. Lyle Blackwood, the free safety, Richard Bishop, 72, the nose tackle out of Louisville, stopping Cleveland Franklin, a five-year veteran from Baylor. Second down, 10 for the Colts, who tra trailed 10 to nothing in the first quarter with 40 seconds left to play. Cleveland Franklin is another player that has impressed Coach Frank Cush. He told you and I he's got about 15 of them, so Franklin's in, in a nice group. Second down. And Dickey trying to get that first down. He's going to come up a yard short at the 36-yard line of the Dolphins. And Ernest Roll prevents him from getting that first down. So the Baltimore Colts with Mike Pagel in command. Moving the ball down into Miami territory at the 36. The way to beat the Miami defense is run right at, at the them. The if you run away Miami from them, their great speed up. will keep them from doing anything. And the clock has run out. We have come to the end of the first quarter. The Miami Dolphins on a touchdown reception by Nat Moore and a field goal by Von Shaman lead 10 to nothing. You in Baltimore, where the Colts are trailing the Miami Dolphins by seven to nothing, or ten to nothing rather, as we go into the second quarter. Third down, one coming up for the Colts. You need points on this drive badly, Merle. Play action. Third down and short. Pagel throwing for the first down, and he completes it to Reese McCall, the tight end. And that is only the second reception for Reese McCall this year, and that's why the crowd is reacting. AJ. 77. I, made the I really like Mike Pagel here. It's a deep receiver he looks for first. He comes to his second receiver, and that's the toughest thing to teach a rookie quarterback in the NFL, to pick up your secondary receivers. He found him, knew he had to have the first down yard. Reese McCall, the number one draft choice in 1978. Seeing very little action now for the Colts. He's back on the sideline. The pitch to McMillan. Gets a block from Dickey. by Lyle Blackwood. See what I mean by going wide against the 3-4 defense of Miami? You think you're going to break a long one, and then all of a sudden the speed of that defense will catch up with him and hold you to three or four yards. See, he's outside, then there's the great speed of Blackwood, and he catches him, and it's just a mediocre game. The second down five. The Colts had 77 total yards in the first quarter, 67 rushing, 10 passing. 
Miami 13 with a rush, 73 in the air, 86 total. That's the first quarter. Curtis Dickey trying to pick his way for a little bit, and that's all he gets, a little bit. Down to the 24, Bob Brudzinski, 59, the linebacker on the stop. And so again, the Baltimore Colts are faced with a third down and short. I told you the Colts offense was uh, hurting a little bit when it came to throwing the football 10 yards in the first quarter. That hurt them. They threw the ball better uh, in the game at uh, Minnesota that I had a couple of weeks ago. You got to throw to win today. There is absolutely no way just to run it and get by in the NFL. On third and short, let's see what the Colts do. Dickey diving for it. We'll see what they mark it. I think he's a little short, Merle, but they'll go for it. I watch Frank Clifton and the field goal team on it. <laughs> well, I don't think so. If it's close, he wants his team to have a chance to score a touchdown. A.J. Dewey made the tackle. I, the other thing that Frank Cush is looking for, as he explained to us yesterday, too, uh, as Mike and I discussed, his uh, ball club in the future, he said, these guys have to learn to win again. He said, this team hasn't won in so long, they've forgotten how to win. And that's a very important part of a winning program and a winning team. It's tough to win in this league, but once you learn how to, it's just as easy as a long losing streak. A long winning streak, same things can happen. Way they have it lined up, it's going to be fourth and short. Fourth and real short. You hate to say a play in the uh, early in the second quarter is important, but this one might, might the game might hinge on it. Curtis Dickey shaking up on the play, so we've got a timeout now. 13 minutes, 26 seconds left to play in the first half. And here at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, the Dolphins lead it 10 to nothing. Texas A&M shaking up on the play. He's sitting on the bench, got a nice pack on the back of his head. There it is. I think it'll be all right. He's a tough kid. Fourth down and inches. Hello, McMillan, up the middle for a first down. Dixon is now the running back. McMillan, first down and plenty more. He opened up the left side. Senate and Hudson, you commented about their blocking before. They get in the first down inside the 20 and about the 17. Cush has not been happy with Hart or Huff, so they go over to the other side with the young kids, and of course, with Dickey Hurt, you go to McMillan, your bread and butter back, and he had a nice hole and made the first down. A.J. Dewey, or Dewey, as he prefers to be called now, 6 4 48 He was blocked, but he still came back to make a shoestring tackle. First down. That's Dixon. Dixon gets pelted at about the line of scrimmage. A good shoulder shot by Bob Brzezinski and Ernest Roan, both linebackers. Watch this. I don't know what they fed Bob Brzezinski for breakfast, but he is having one of the better games I've ever seen him play. He's in on every tackle, and he uh, took Zachary Dixon right down to the ground. Second down, 10. I think he was worth two second-round draft choices. Oh, room. boy. You couldn't pry him loose. that pass he's dropped two other ones so far today with the cold offense having problems throwing the football when you get a chance to catch one you've got to do it there the ball goes to the ground it's a good call he never had control of it walker and kozlowski have come on now to form the nickel defense for the miami dolphins we saw a shot of frank Bush. he's not very happy either with that one third down on the 18. out of it. Butler was well covered. Never had a chance to catch it. Dan Miller, rookie from Miami. Sure that he has a great following. Watch 
watching him this afternoon down in Miami. 58 yarder last week, third longest in NFL history. He broke the Colt record that Burt Rutchichar set about 29 years ago. Let's see what he can do with this one. No good, no good. So Miller misses it. And with 11.45 to go in the first half, the Miami Dolphins lead the Baltimore Colts by 10 to nothing. You don't even have to look up to know that you mishit it and watch. See, he didn't even look up, and he knew that he hadn't even gotten into the ball. Dan Miller, the 58-yarder, an all-time record for the Baltimore Colts. Can't make the short ones, huh? Can't make the short ones. David Woodley, four out of five, 71 yards, brings the Miami offense to the 20. for a first down and more. Finally chased out of bounds. He'll mark it at the 35-yard line. James Burroughs, number 45, the cornerback, getting him out of bounds. And it's a first down for Miami. Good teams take advantage of mistakes by other teams. They miss the field goal. They know the Colt defense is down. They run a reverse little gadget play. Tony Nathan had lots of room to run, got a first down. Colts got to regroup now. They needed points on that drive, Merle, and they didn't get them. First and 10 on the 35. Playoff bound Miami Dolphins looking for the home field advantage, wanting to win this game today to have that opportunity as that pass is completed to Tony Nathan at the 40-yard line, where it'll be second down five. Johnny Cooks, number 96, the All-America linebacker from Mississippi State, comes up with a tackle. One thing about Johnny Cooks, if he hits you, you know it. Oh, yes, he certainly does. David Woodley has been working and working over his three years on how to pick up secondary receivers. Here, Don Shula gives him a chance to throw that short Second pass, keep his confidence throughout the game. Dolphins, second down five on the 40, leading 10 to nothing here in the first half. Cephalo in motion. Good, solid contact on Andre Franklin at the line of scrimmage Andre by Cleveland Franklin Crosby, Harris. number 73. Cleveland Crosby and James Hunter on the A 250-pounder out of the University of Arizona. One thing the Baltimore Colts have done well today is stop the main man on offense for Miami. Andre Franklin has done absolutely nothing. But then the uh, Colts are weak at other places. How many yards has he gained so far, Merle? Well, let's check Franklin out. Seven carries, 11 yards. Not a usual day for him. Joe Rose in motion. Three tight ends in the ball game on third and five. And that one is incomplete. Double coverage on the intended receiver, Tony Nathan, coming out of the backfield. And Johnny Cooks broke that one up. And the 16 or 17,000 fans in Baltimore appreciate the defensive effort. Frank Cush told us yesterday, my defense can play in the NFL. It's my offense I have problems with. Miami, a very good football team. And other than those early 10 points, Baltimore has dominated on defense. Tom Morris with a 38.9 putting average. We'll kick it away. Nesby Glasgow is the deep man for the Baltimore Colts. Morris hangs it up there. Fair catch call for by Glasgow and take it on the 24-yard line of Baltimore. So the Colts will go to the offense again. Ten minutes, ten seconds left to play in the first half in Baltimore. And after that 42-yard kick, the Colts will take over trailing 10 to nothing. So 10 to nothing, have the ball at their own 24-yard line. Bernard Henry is split wide to the right side as Pagel calls it, sending Butler in motion back to the left. Randy McMillan, not very much, about a yard, and that's it. Ernest Rowan, 55, and Bob Brzezinski, number 59 over there. Den Herder was in on the tackle. Brzezinski is always, if Brzezinski is not needed, he is there directing traffic. <laughs> he turned it in that time, Merle, and gave Rowan the chance to, to make the tackle. Watch him on this play. I think I said a second, two seconds. It was a second and a third draft choice they gave to Los Angeles for him. And he's had an outstanding game, and we're only in the middle of the second quarter. Second and nine. Pagel under a rush. In the pocket, throws it, completes it. 
to Curtis Dickey, who's back in the ball game. He's to the 31, possibly the 32. Curtis Rohn, the linebacker, had the coverage. Boy, that's a tough assignment on a linebacker covering Dickey coming out of that backfield. He's a world-class sprinter. He's third down about two. They say he gets 4-2, four, 4-3 four, in the 40. And I, I know a few linebackers whose knees start to shake when they come out on him one-on-one. -on -one. New England has come back with a lead over Buffalo. The disgruntled Patriots, Kansas City, holding that big lead over the New York Jets. Philadelphia now leading the Giants at halftime by one. Third down and two. First down to Dickey. Dickey to the field. Dickey to the 40. Puck to the line. He is out of bounds at the 34-yard line of Miami, and Gerald Small finally got him out of bounds after a 31-yard pickup. He talked about a linebacker one NFL 82 in the battle for the playoff spot in Foxborough. The Patriots have just taken the lead. It's Grogan. It's a toller. But they missed the extra point. Patriots by three. Back to Morrow and Mike. Thanks so much for the report. You know, disgruntled or not, the Patriots want to be in the playoffs too as Dixon carries the ball down to the 16-yard line. So the Patriots and the Bills are really tied into each other today. A.J. Dewey made the tackle. On that last play, it'll be spotted at about the 16-yard line. And we have six minutes, 23 seconds to go in the first half with a third down and four coming up for the Baltimore Colts. And again, Don Shula sends his nickel back in. Don Shula wasn't kidding. He said, this game, he said, sure, we're in the playoffs, but this game is very, very important to us. It's a must-win situation. Everybody is looking to that home field advantage. Under a blitz, flag goes down, and Butler, the intended receiver, incomplete. They're going to get Miami. Somebody was holding. Uh-oh. That's a surprise. Lyle Blackwood on a safety blitz was really poured in on Mike Pagel, Frank Cush. Off 
obviously unhappy with the call that Zeke Bratkowski is offensive coordinator of the headset, former Packer, former Chicago Bear. I... Illegal formation offense declined. Fourth down. Yes, declined it. Frank Cush says, hey, we'll talk it over. Take a timeout. He doesn't want to goof up this opportunity to get on the scoreboard. So they will, uh, while it's kind of free and easy on the sideline, talk it over. Could be a field goal. We've got a timeout in Baltimore with the Dolphins leading by 10. I don't know why. It was fourth down. The penalty was declined. You're going to kick a field goal anyway, unless he wanted to talk about a fake field goal. Now, that's a possibility. Well, let's see what happens. Dan Miller has missed a couple, and holding for him will be Ron Stark. Pat Beach is in to do the snap. It'll be a 34-yard effort right up the middle. Slow snap, but this time Miller finds it, and he has hooked it off to the left. You know, the last time he was wide right, but I'm thinking that I should have commented there. nothing lead. Well, kicker Miller, and as you pointed out, he overcompensated. He missed to the right on his last miss. This time he tried to compensate, missed to the left. So the Dolphins with a 10 to nothing lead. First out of their own 20, and this is Nathan on the sweep. And a good defensive reaction by number 96, Dave Simmons, a rookie linebacker from Mississippi State. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. And this is South Florida 7, WCKT Miami. Merle Herman and Mike Hafner with you in Baltimore, where the Colts trail the Miami Dolphins 10 to nothing. Dolphins have the ball after yard loss, second and 11. Can you see the building program on defense? These guys haven't quit. Yes, sir. in motion. Woodley rolling. Now throwing to Rose and it was tipped away at the very last second by number 30 Larry Anderson. And Rose would have been on his way. Oh, hello. Touchdown. This is a corner route to the tight end, Rose. We talked to Coach Don Shula before the game. He said, Rose is my deep threat from the tight end spot. He is wide open, and he is thinking touchdown here. But Larry Anderson makes an excellent play and just gets enough of the ball to keep Rose catching it. You're right, Merle, over six. So Larry Anderson takes six away from the Dolphins. Mark Denard, number 63, is coming at center now. White Stevenson is out. They go to the shotgun. Peggle, I'd have run the football here. Watch him as he gets outside. 
I don't know if you'll be able to see all the room, but he had about 35 yards downfield where there was no one from Miami, and look how close this one came to be being tipped away. A nice concentration catch by Butler, though, and a first down. First down of the 39 of Miami. Dolphins lead 10 to nothing. Dixon on the run to the 35. I just know the Colt defense is saying to their offensive counterparts, hey, you guys, get us something out there, will you? We're stopping one of the better teams in the league, and you can't get us any points. It'll be second down six. Four minutes, 23 seconds to go in the first half. Bernard Henry is split wide to the left side. Ray Butler to the right. direction McMillan comes back down to the 31 yard line where Don McNeil number one draft choice of 1980 out of Alabama makes the hit and it is third down and two they must get tight end Tim Sherwin involved in this pass offense Merle the outside receivers are being double covered they're leaving Sherwin with the linebackers all by himself they don't get the tight end involved the pass offense isn't going to go at all Sherwin that tight end is set left Third and two. McMillan just lowers his head and gets the first down the hard way. Ernest Roan put a shoulder in him. Lauren Jen Herder came up to help out. And Doug Butters, number 75, is also there. So Randy McMillan, the power runner of the Colts, now comes to the sideline. Second year man from Pittsburgh. that time by Jeff Hart on dinner. First down on the 27 of Miami. Three minutes left to play in the first half. Pagel swings it out to Franklin. Franklin inside the 20 will be close to a first down. Larry Gordon, number 50, the linebacker. Gerald Small, 48. Glenn Blackwood, 47, all there for the tackle. Two minutes, 38 seconds to go in the first half. That was a smart call that time. The linebackers were looking to help out on the wide receivers. Throws it outside and gives his running back some room to run with those linebackers concentrating on the deeper pass. Second down, less than a yard. First down for Franklin and Moore. signifying two minutes to go in the first half. We have a timeout in Baltimore. And the Baltimore Colts driving have the ball at the 10-yard line of the Dolphins. The Dolphin defense will try to hold them now and protect that 10 to nothing Miami lead. Football belongs to the Colts that close to the 10-yard line, which means the Colts can get a first down without scoring. They better get something out of this, believe me. Not quite first and goal to go. Puts wide to the left side. Butler goes into the slot left. Butler back in motion. Dixon on the run, on the sweep. Trap, no place to go there. Reverses, gets a block, comes back. Moves to the outside. He is gone. Colts are on the scoreboard on an 11-yard touchdown run by Zachary Dixon. And I'll tell you what, he gets a fancy stepping on this one and an excellent block. Watch at the very end. Gerald Small is going to have a shot at him. First, it's a power sweep to the right. Dixon recognizes right away there's no chance that he can get in over there. Reverses his field. Now watch for 48 Small. He's going to put a move on him there to the inside. There's the block by Butler and in the end zone, standing up. Dan Miller with the extra point try. He's got it. And the Baltimore Colt fans, not too many of them, but they've got something to yell about. Their team is on the scoreboard. And there's Dixon's first touchdown this year. So we'll take a timeout now and return after this. Furnished as a public service by the National Football League. 
the kickoff will be handled by Dan Miller. Fulton Walker is back deep for the Miami Dolphins. That was a first career touchdown rushing by Dixon. Fulton Walker on the 15 on the short kick. The flag was thrown. And there's another flag thrown. As the ball is returned to the 30, Franklin down there to help out on the tackle. We had a flag thrown on the kick and a flag thrown on the return. Baltimore was offside on the kick. That's for certain. Blocking below the waist against Miami. We'll see what happens. Chuck will tell us if he can remember what happened. <laughs> Offside, number 38 on the kicking team. Low block, number 52 on the receiving team. Replay the down. Well, that wiped uh, six seconds off the clock. And we'll do it all over again. I'm sure Frank... Frank would love to see that. Frank Cush. Run it down. We'll go in with a 10-7 deficit. That's better than he figured. Well, the Baltimore Colts played a very tough game against the Dolphins in Miami before succumbing 24-20 back on September 19th. Gee, that seems like three years ago. It really does, doesn't it? Colts had a good running game that day, though, 162 yards. They were also down 14 to nothing, and Miami commented afterwards, we thought they were going to quit. They haven't quit here either. Miami Dolphins, well-organized, well-coached, take advantage of the talent. There's Dixon, who scored the touchdown, the first of his career rushing. He's bounced around a little while uh, with the Philadelphia Eagles and found a home here with Baltimore. I don't think I'd like to be in the Miami locker room at halftime. This time, a real good pump by Dan Miller. And a fine return by Fulton Walker as Walker gets out to the 26. Darrell Hempel brings him down after a 24-yard return. A minute 38 seconds to go in the first half. Let's see what the Dolphins can do in this time. They better do something. As I said, Mr. Shula going to be very upset at halftime. Reminding his players how important this game is about home field advantage. They have got to win, and they cannot let this young club sneak up and take that away from them. We saw Don Shula send Rich Diana into the backfield, the all-time leader in rushing at Yale. Shotgun. seconds to go in the first half. I'm impressed with this Colt defense, Merle. They've played very, very well this first half. They don't look like an inexperienced bunch to me. Tom Figueredo comes in. Nathan goes out. Stevenson out at center. Mark Denard is in for Miami. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Don Strock in the second half. Joe Rose is in now as a tight end. They blunt the left side. short of a first down by Johnny Cooks. The All-America rookie out of Mississippi State. Miami will take a timeout and stop the clock with a minute 23 seconds to go in the first half. Tony Nathan from Alabama, the MVP of the Dolphins in 1981. This year, 189 yards going into the ballgame. The, all of the statistics are, you know, they're so misleading because of the short schedule. Nine games. You, years from now, when we look at the statistics on this 1982 season, we're going to say, boy, what a lousy year everybody had. <laughs> Asterisk by every one of them saying this was the strike short season. The Dolphins into this game uh, with two losses to the Buccaneers of Tampa Bay and the New England Patriots and three to nothing. And I see no snowblowers here this afternoon. <laughs> That's Frank Cush said before the game. He wished he'd got a lot of snow. He has his own sweeper for the field goal kicker. A certain ethnic persuasion with a broom. If I were the Dolphins, I'd have a snowblower on the field in Miami for the playoffs, but never snows. And it never snows. <laughs> So David Woodley from LSU, who's the quarterback who shared the duties with David Woodley at LSU. A young man named Insminger, who almost made it New Orleans, by the way. And he was the thrower at LSU, and Woodley was the runner. And they 
sharing the time as quarterbacks, as Woodley does with Stockton. Miami to the run with Nathan for the first down at the 40. You see Johnny Cook's 98. 42, Derek Hatchett from the University of Texas. No huddle, shotgun. Going to the near side to get out of bounds. Durrell Harris does that, gets the first down on the 48. Gain of 12, Hatchett got the coverage, got him out of bounds, a minute two seconds left. Woodley looks so confident back there now, and I'm sure that uh, Don Schiller is confident they can at least get three out of this thing. He knows there's a short hook on. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you believe that? The Jets went to sleep. Should have stayed in New York. The Jets, the second best offense, getting hammered by Kansas City, 34 to 6. Jets looking for a home field advantage in the playoffs. This is not going to help. Bill Kenny, three touchdown passes for the Chiefs today. Nick Lowry's kicking the field goal. First and 10 for Woodley. Under the rice, gets it away. And almost completed. There were three defensive backs there for Cephalo to battle for the ball. And Cephalo almost got right in the midst of them and pulled it in. Take another look. Another mix up in the backfield for the young Colts. How does Cephalo get this wide open? If Woodley doesn't underthrow it, he's in the end zone. There were three Colts right there. Nesby Glassboat, go let it go over his head. Burroughs was too deep. Seth almost stole it away from him. 55 seconds to go in the first half. Dolphins lead it by a score of 10 to 7. On a touchdown pass from Woodley to Nat Moore and a Von Schaumann field goal. Nixon scoring an 11 yard run for Baltimore. Woodley back over the middle for the completion to the 34-yard line and a first down for the Dolphins. Tom Vigarito hauling that one in. A 14-yard reception by Vigarito. No huddle, 40 seconds to go. Woodley throwing to the near side, just throws it away. Cephalo was covered. He was covered well by Derek Hatchett. So Woodley stops the clock with 34 seconds remaining. They had two timeouts before that play. They made the first down. I would have called timeout, taken time to regroup, and set up a play that would have worked. They hurried too quickly there and had no chance. It'll be second and ten for Don Shula's Miami Dolphins. You want about a 10 to 15 yard completion here to ensure the fact you can at least get a field goal on this drive. And that'll help temper Shula's temper when he gets into the locker room at halftime. Zeppelo to the right, Harris to the left. Woodley going long down the sideline for Zeppelo, touchdown. Jimmy Zeppelo, his first touchdown of the year, a 34-yard reception. Another mix-up in the backfield. It happened all afternoon for Baltimore. Nesby Glasgow and James Burroughs. Nobody knew who had the, the deep outside coverage. And you'll see Woodley just wait until he, and look how wide open he is. Stand there by himself, Burroughs trying to get back into the coverage. But I think it was Nesby Glasgow who had the outside deep coverage in that zone and didn't get there. So Frank Cush has another problem to work on, pass defense. Von Schaumann for the extra point try, struck to hold it. 27 seconds to go in the first half. And Von Schaumann pops it through. So Miami takes a 17 to 7 lead with 27 seconds left to go. And you talk about a team that moved it in a hurry down the field. The Dolphins did that. So David Woodley has hit two touchdown passes today. One to Nat Moore of 11 yards, one to Cephalo of 34. Both their big touchdown drives have come off one long pass play that helped the drive go, and both because of mix ups by the Baltimore safeties. Tommy Vigarito, who caught that pass to set up the touchdown pass. If he catches a touchdown pass today, he's going to become the first player in NFL history to score on a punt return, a run, and a pass in back-to-back -back seasons. He did that last year. You may think that's not hard to do. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> that's kind of like, uh, as you said, hitting for the cycle in baseball. Vigarito is quite a performer. Shaman teeing the ball up, Watch former Oklahoma All-American. 
the premier kickers in the NFL. You want to put this one on the ground so you don't get a chance for a long return. I'll be surprised if he puts it up in the air. No. He's trying to kick the air out of the ball. Dixon at the five. Dixon breaking a tackle and brought down to the 25-yard line with 22 seconds to go in the first half. 21-yard return, and the tackle made by Vince Heflin. The ball spotted just across the 25. And the Colts have it there. And the clock goes, or will go. 73 yards, eight plays, a minute 11. That's the way to run the two-minute drill. Now you'll see how to play zone defense and pass prevent. Miami knows how to do it. Bagel swings it out on a screen. McMillan to the 30 and gets the first down to the 32. We're down to 13 seconds, and the Colts call a timeout. Stopping the clock with 13 seconds to go in the first half. Mike Kozlowski and Lyle Blackwood made the tackle. And Miami has gone into a pass prevent defense of sorts. Sometimes they use five, sometimes they use six. Won't be long till they'll be using eight. That's true. With all the pass receivers in the NFL, both backs now, two tight ends, three wide receivers, you got to have a lot of DBs in there to stop the passing game. And no blocker left for the quarterback. That's right. Better be able, be able to move just a little bit to get out of the way of the rush. First one, you got eight in there. You only got three rushing them, so it's not too tough. Ball on the 32-yard line of Baltimore. The Colts scored their last possession on an 11-yard touchdown run by Zach Dixon. They started a power sweep right. He couldn't make it. Reversed his field. Went back to the left. Went in standing up. And then the Dolphins said, wait a minute. You're not going to get away with that. And in a minute and 11 seconds, storm back on a long drive using sideline patterns. And then going up the middle of Igarito and finally the 34-yard touchdown pass to Cephalo. I'm sure those offensive guys knew that Mr. Shula would have a word or two to say if they didn't get some kind of points on the board. He may have something to say anyway. <laughs> Pagel on first down. Over the middle, incomplete, right into the hands of Butler. But uh, he was double covered and they shook the ball loose. Kozlowski, number 40, Don McNeil, 28. Nine seconds to go in the first half. Now, if they complete the pass over the middle, they got to take the time out. They've had four drop passes, Merle, and three missed field goals. That's what's happened to the cold offense today. Second down. Butler goes in motion. Makes his break to the near side, and that pass a little bit short. Intended for Matt Bruza. Butler started in motion, cut back to the near sideline. Don McNeil had the coverage on the play. We have four seconds to go. Anybody for a long field goal? <laughs> I think a long pass. Hope for a penalty flag. I'm surprised they haven't done that earlier. Third down. They have a 70 mile an hour wind behind the kicker <laughs> yeah. from this range. I know Miller can kick him a long way, but this one to be a little bit too far. Two seconds, one second, clock is out, pass completed. Dixon runs it out of bounds, but there's no time left. So we have completed the first half here at Baltimore, and the Miami Dolphins, who want to win this game, to help themselves in the home field advantage of the playoffs, lead it by a score of 77. I've been very impressed with the young Baltimore defense, other than a few mix-ups on pass defense, but their offense has just not been able to take advantage of Miami. And meanwhile, uh, David Woodley has played like the old pro with lots of relaxation back there, completing two touchdown passes, getting a field goal. It is 17-7 Miami at the half, and we'll be back. Strzok of the Miami Dolphins, and we were talking about will he come out and play in the second half. And Mike Hafner had an opportunity to talk to him before the ball game about being the bullpen star of the Dolphins. Hard to say. Uh, I think a, a couple weeks ago we made the change with four minutes to go in the game against the Jets, and uh, I just try to stay ready. I just try to stay ready at all times and uh, uh, just get myself physically and mentally ready, ready to play uh, from the first play on. 
That's interesting. Uh, knowing that you're going to sit and then have to go in, can you stay warm? Or are you prepared when you've gone in? Has he fooled you a couple times? A few times, yes, I have been fooled. But, but uh, like I say, I prepare. I, I make up my own game plan out of the game plan that we have for, e for each team each week. And, and I just try to uh, uh, see what's working. Naturally, I'm in the game at all times, which is very important. Anytime you're considered any kind of a reliever, uh, I stay in the game at all times, see what plays are working, and when I'm asked to go in, uh, usually it's in a throwing situation, but uh, I also know which runs have worked, and uh, if I have to, I use those also. Interesting. His own game plan. We'll be back after these messages and a word from your local station. Miami Dolphins leading the Colts by a score of 17-7 to as we look at the statistics and go right down to the last one. Well, they've shut down the Dolphin running game. The Colts, that's all they've got is a running game, so they would dominate in the time of possession. And it's a big domination, 21 minutes to almost nine minutes. Total yards, 234, 178. Colts leading there. There's that rushing stat. The Dolphins with 30 yards rushing. Andre Franklin's done that on a regular basis all season, except today. So the Dolphins, who consider this a critical game as far as home field advantage is concerned in the playoffs, take a 10-point lead into the third quarter, and they got their last seven points with only 27 seconds to go in the first half. I think Woodley saved his job for maybe the first four or five minutes of the second half, but if they stall again on offense and he starts overthrowing receivers, the old uh, guy we had at halftime, Don Strzok, could be in there right away. Ready for the second so Dan Miller will be kicking off for Baltimore. Bolden Walker, number 41, a second-year man from West Virginia. Back deep for the Miami Dolphins. He's averaged 21-4 on his return. Here he comes. He gets the ball out across the 25, going to the 27-yard line. Mike Cummiston comes in to make the tackle along with Cliff Odom. So he maintains his uh, average on his kickoff returns. And it's Woodley at quarterback, Merle. Brought that one back 23 yards. Woodley, Nathan, Franklin. Franklin's been shut down. I wonder if he'll appear here in the second half. Harris, Seppolo, and Hardy. Seppolo with a touchdown pass. And that offensive line that takes care of Mr. Woodley. And the man who calls the shots. in motion to lead the blocking on the pitch for Franklin. And on the sweep, he is brought down at about the 34-yard line, Johnny Cooks. Number 98, a rookie from Mississippi State, stepping in there. Hardy goes in motion, or did in that play, to give the maximum blocking on the sweep, and still they got very little. I've got a feeling that defensive line, along with the linebackers, know they've got to stop Franklin, and they've done it for the first half. Is it going to be a great player? And the cornerbacks have got to learn how to play the deep zone. It's cost them two touchdowns. Second down, five. Ronnie Lee is in there as a tight end now. This time it is Andre Franklin again. Franklin to the 39. Barry Krause, 55, the veteran linebacker from Alabama, on the hit on Franklin. Got up for the first down, and there's how to sit on a lead. Get yourself a big fullback to let him run all afternoon. First down just on the inside of the 40-yard line of Miami Territory. Harris is in. Nathan is out. Harris comes split wide to the left side. Going to the right is Jimmy Cephalo. Graceland, 52, the right linebacker from California, making the stop on Franklin, who had 655 yards coming into this game today to be the second leading rusher in the NFL to Freeman McNeil of the New York Jets, who is having a very difficult time in Kansas City today. That's three straight carries for Franklin. We said at the top of the show, this man has been the offense, and especially when you have a lead. You want that big pullback, four and five yards of clip, you can really run the clock. That earned him a breather, and now Tony Nathan is in to replace him with a second and six coming. 
There's Hardy leading, but Nathan throwing, and it is incomplete. I believe Hardy was the intended receiver. He certainly was. He was wide open. Somebody got a big hand up there, knocked it down. He's passing that for Hardy. They ran that play as a sweep with Hardy blocking just about two plays ago. Here it is again. Let's see if we can see who got his hand up. Nathan throwing, and now it's too hard to tell. Pretty clear picture to me. Yeah. <laughs> who was it, <laughs> Six for the Dolphins, who lead 17 to seven. Well, the problems of the Miami offense that Don Shula talked about, we're seeing, except for a couple long touchdown passes, they've been fairly ineffective against this club. Vigorino and Rose are in. They go out of the shotgun, and Vigorino on the catch. Vigorino at the 30-yard line. Greg Braceland making the stop. A flag is thrown to the backfield. There is a flag on the play. So Tom Vigorino picks up 26 yards on that reception. But the referee, Chuck Heberling, said, bring it back, boys. I think it's against Baltimore. Roughing the passer, maybe? Well, let's see if the play will stay. Chuck Heberling waved the ball uh, to be brought back. Said, no, I guess we'll just leave it right there. And we'll walk some more. It is. Roughing the passer. It's a personal foul penalty. Dead ball play. After the play was completed, so they'll tack it onto the game. And now Chuck will tell us what it is. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Number 99. First down. On L. Thompson. Watch 99, the big pass rusher. Well, we'll see the pass completion first. One-on-one -on -one with the linebacker, Greg Braceland. And then Thompson roughed the passer afterwards in another 15 yards. Miami a first down on the 15 of the Baltimore Colts. Franklin down to about the 11-yard line. Braceland and Krauss. The linebackers on the right side. Stop the play. New England. 30 to 19 over Buffalo. Grogan has hit Hasselback with a two-yard touchdown pass. 6.49 to go in the fourth quarter in that ball game. And Kansas City stomping the New York Jets. That's going to hurt the Jets as far as the home field advantage is concerned of the playoffs. And the Eagles and Giants are staying neck and neck. The Eagles lead by one in Washington and St. Louis both in the playoffs. But it's Washington rolling in this one. Nathan on the pitch. Nathan, first down, down near the goal line, out of bounds on the three. James Burroughs Tony is getting him out of bounds. taken out of bounds at about the three-yard line by Burroughs. Let's check more scores that are coming in now. Final week of the season, week number nine in the shortened campaign, Pittsburgh over Cleveland. Having an easier time than everybody expected in that one. Both those teams will be in the playoffs, though, Merle. Can you believe Buffalo won't? They lose that game, and it looks like they will. I, I picked them to be in easily. And I thought those guys in New England didn't want to play for Ron Meyer. I guess that uh, doesn't make any difference, does it? If you're a good football player, you win no matter what the circumstances. On first and goal, uh, Franklin is denied at about the one-yard line. You see number 57 getting up, Mike Thomaston. They really jammed up the middle against Franklin. Opening drive of the half, you would expect if they doing this well, that Baltimore quit, but not here. Look at him smacking away at one of the best fullbacks in the league. It is second and goal at the one-yard line of the Baltimore Colts. Houston and Cincinnati putting a lot of points on the board with the Bengals winning. Franklin powering to the goal line, and no hands have gone up yet. There they are. Touchdown, Miami. Andre Franklin, Andre Franklin getting his seventh touchdown of the year. It is a touchdown. Not by much, but he didn't need much. Another close look. Baltimore won't give up. But Franklin, who was came out of obscurity at Nebraska, he blocked for a lot of people. Now he's the big running star for the Dolphins in the NFL. Kutchenberg was leading the block. Did you see him? Bob holding up both hands. <laughs> Flat on his back. Touchdown. So Franklin gets number seven. Two all pros. One blocking, one carrying it. Touchdown. 
33-3 is the score. Ron Shaman, Strock holding. 23-7. So Miami leads it by a score of 24-7. We'll take a timeout here with 10 minutes, 58 seconds left to play in the third period, and we'll return after this. Ten yard line. Butler, the intended receiver, Lionel Blackwood, brings it back 16 yards with a second interception of the year, and the 10-year veteran from TCU has just played brilliantly in that secondary. There's a rookie mistake. Lyle Blackwood was out of Mike Pagel's view. He couldn't see him, and as the turn-in pattern comes, he just steps right in front, and goodbye. Rookie mistake from the quarterback, Mike Pagel. Down to the 15-yard line. The ball is placed there. Miami takes over, leading by a score of 24-7 to 7 with 8 minutes and 44 seconds to go in the third quarter. Nathan and Franklin are the running backs. Second man, that's Nathan. Inside the 10, down to about the 8, where it does be Glasgow, the free safety, comes up to make the hit. So Tony Nathan gets six yards. It'll be second down four. Tony Nathan, a very tough run. He's usually the finesse runner. Here he's running inside. And you want a statistic that tells you about the Baltimore Colt defense? Nesby Glasgow, who made this tackle, is the number one second tackler for the defense yard. of the Colts. And when a free safety is your leading tackler, that tells a big story. Nat Moore has replaced Cephalo as a wideout. He caught a touchdown pass earlier, but they go to the run. Nathan trying to get to the outside. The Baltimore defense reacts well to spring that play out. He can't go anywhere and is stopped just Nathan about at the line of scrimmage. No Fletcher Jenkins on the stop. Passing down here for Miami. And if they get in here, we won't see Don Stock all afternoon. He can go back to the bullpen, sit down, keep warm. Go back and listen to the radio. <laughs> Whatever he does. Don Shula saw his team score with 27 seconds to go in the first half to take a 17-7 lead. Then over the third quarter with a drive that netted a touchdown with 10.58 to go in the third period. David Woodley in the shotgun, third down. Woodley over the middle, incomplete to Rose, fly to the play. Chuck Heverly. Holding, Holding. Offense, offense, number 79. 79. Pass That's interference, defense, defense, number 30. They were offset. Third down. Joe Kiesler holding on the offense. Larry Anderson, pass interference on the defense. We'll see the pass interference. You see he's got his hand on his back even before the ball gets there. Big break for the Colts that there was a holding penalty on the offense. They'll make them do it again because that was first and goal to one. John Giesler, who has just been a tremendous football player for the Dolphins, number one draft choice, 1979, out of the University of Michigan. Third down four. Woodley lobs it for the end zone. The bounce. Said I came up with it, and the official said, No, 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 Duriel. Pass intended for Duriel Harris, incomplete. Seven year veteran from New Mexico, great pair of hands, but uh, not quite long enough to scoop that one. Once in my NFL career, they gave me one that bounced, but they don't miss them very often. Watch this one. Hits the ground first, bounces right up into his tummy, but it's smart. Stick it up in the air, try to get him to call it for you. Fourth down coming up. You want to tell us the date and game so we can have that uh, score reversed? Art McNally already knows. <laughs> the kick from the 16. 26-yard effort by Von Schaumann, who has a 35-yarder today. Just a chip shot for Von Schaumann. And the 26-yard field goal adds three more points to make it 27-7. to So the Miami Dolphins have a 20-point lead with seven minutes and five seconds to play in the third quarter, and we'll return after this. 27-7 Miami. Ball will be fielded by Matt Boozer. 
Who's it from the five returning the ball to about the 18-yard line? And the tackler is Vince Kepler. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. And this is South Florida 7. coming up here very shortly. Merle Herman and Mike Hefner with you from Baltimore's Memorial Stadium with Miami on top, 27 to 7. Here comes a blitz against Pago. And down he goes. Glenn Blackwood on a safety blitz. Dales Pago back around the 11-yard line. When you got a rookie quarterback and a 20-point lead, you blitz him. Here's that score. We're going to bring you Kansas City beat the New York Jets 37 to 13. And Bill Kenny had quite an afternoon for Kansas City. In fact, he had a pretty good afternoon last week in the losing cause against San Francisco, hitting 14 out of 30, 181 yards. Today, he had two touches. In fact, he had three touchdown passes today. We've been looking for number 10 in the white jerseys to relieve a quarterback. We may see number 10 in the blue jerseys. Art Schleister. They go throwing over the middle, completing this one to Zachary Dixon out of the backfield. He's up to about the 18-yard line, which was the original line of scrimmage. Bob Rudzinski, number 59, the tackler on the play. And Pago got bounced back into the uh, end zone. Watch this. With the blitzes, you want to throw it over the middle. That's where the blitzing linebackers leave a hole. Pago read it right this time. Vern Denherter was really coming at him. Schleister continues to warm up at the bullpen, if you will. Kozlowski is now the defensive secondary for Miami as they go into the nickel on third down 10. They go running for life and is brought down in the 20th fourth down at eight. Charles Bowser, 56, the rookie linebacker from Duke, making the tackle. They go hobbling just slightly as he comes to the sideline. Hello, Art Schleister. <laughs> By the way, I wonder what Don Shula will do now with his 27-7 lead. Will he go to the bench to uh, kind of let some of the little wounds heal up for the veterans? 5-17 five, five, to go in the quarter. It's a little bit early. Three touchdowns will get you right back in the lead for Baltimore. He might wait till the fourth quarter, Merle. Ron Stark will do the kicking for Baltimore, and Tom Vigorito is back there for the Dolphins. Tommy taking the ball to his own 30. And he is rustled down at about the 44. Johnny Wright makes the tackle, a 45-yard punt, an 8-yard return by Vigorito. We've got a timeout with Miami leading in this ball game, 27 to 7. Buffalo, Buffalo is through for the year. New England is playoff bound, 30 to 19. Rogan throwing the winning touchdown pass with 6.49 left to play in the game. Woodley is still the quarterback, handing it off to Franklin, who gets to midfield for a gain of seven. It'll be second down three coming up for Miami. When you're sitting on a 20-point lead, doesn't make a difference what quarterback turns around and hands off to that guy. Well, it's going to be interesting now to see what Don Schuler's strategy is at this point. I mean, never mind the lead. It looks like they've got the game won, but what is the strategy? The strategy is to run off about six or seven minutes off the clock so that Baltimore doesn't have a chance to score three touchdowns and get the lead. Franklin leaping down over the midfield stripe and getting close to the 47. That'll be close to a first down. Remember the days of Zonko when he was at fullback in Miami. He could control the football game. He could run eight or nine minutes off the clock just by letting him gain three or four yards a pop. He's got the same kind of player now in Andre Franklin, 37, and he'll try to do the same thing, though, only throw when they're in a third and long situation. Well, we wondered, we speculated uh, who would be playing the rest of the ball game. Woody Bennett has just come in. He was just added to the roster. He has been brought in uh, to play the fullback spot. Franklin's going to need a rest. He can't carry him off. Third down inches. They just missed the first down. Throws in motion. 
Franklin getting the first down. Not by too much, though. You saw Johnny Cooks, 98. Nesby Glasgow, 25, coming over to make the tackle. I think there's a penalty flag down, too. Face mask. Yep. Washington has beaten St. Louis, or is beating St. Louis. They did beat St. Louis, 28 nothing. It is now a final. It is now a final score, and there it is. Guess what that does for them, Merle? They are now the home team throughout the playoffs. If they continue to win, they will end up with the best record in the NFC, 8-1. And, and I picked them at the beginning of the year to be the San Francisco of the NFL this year. Base pass, number 25, defense, five yards, first down. The foul is on Nesby Glasgow. Well, maybe Andre Franklin can carry it every down. He's going for the first down this time, and we'll watch and see who grabs a hold of his face mask. There it is. Just barely. First and 10 at the 40-yard line of Baltimore. Miami leading 27 to 7. Play action. Woodley has Cephalo open. Jimmy is inside the 10, and clock is still running at the 7, so he did not get out of bounds. James Burroughs, 45, made the tackle after the 35-yard pickup, and there's 3.17 to go here in the third quarter. By the way, you hate to blame one guy, but every time there's been a long gainer or a touchdown pass, 45 Burroughs has been in the area. Now, zone defenses could mean that somebody else was supposed to help him, but he's been obvious by his mistakes today. The Giants in a seesaw game with Philadelphia won at 26-24. That makes the Giants 4-5, and five, Philadelphia 3-6. and six, And out of the playoffs. Right? We don't know if the Giants are in yet, but they've, they've got still a, got a chance. They, they're hanging in there by a thread. Franklin, and he goes down as he was making his cut. Sander Scheiber, 54, Franklin, the linebacker, to the line of came up to make the tackle. Franklin made his cut, and his foot went out from under him. Credit the tackle to the turf. Second down goal. When you get a little tired, you need some turf underneath you that holds you up. And I think Franklin, who's carried the ball a bunch in this drive, just a little bit tired. Legs went out from under it. Ronnie Lee goes out of the game for Miami. Isn't it amazing how blocking backs out of college all of a sudden become stars in this league? William Andrews was a blocker at Auburn. Franklin hard hit Franklin to about up the, the middle three. to the three-yard line. Stopped by Nesby Glasgow. Glasgow made the tackle. I'll tell you, blocking blocking backs coming out of college or backs who can block, pass block especially, are really a premium. Nesby Glasgow, 25. Again, I mentioned he's the leading tackler on that entire Colt defense. Third and goal. He's the a floor. great player, but he can't do it all by himself. Ariel Harris has come in. Glass, or rather, uh, Moore has gone out as a wideout. Woodley now loops one into the end zone, wide open to Bruce Hardy, his second touchdown reception of the year. Bruce Larry Anderson was back there. Big 6'4", 230-pound Bruce Hardy, who also played his collegiate football at Arizona State for the opposing coach. Frank Cush comes up for the touchdown. Watch what he does to Larry Anderson. My goodness. Number 30 thinks he's going to run the out pattern. Now you watch. Anderson's looking around. Where'd he go? There he is for a touchdown. Now Von Shaman for the extra point try. It is 33 to 7. Frank Cush probably thinks, I wish I'd taught those guys so well. <laughs> Especially if they're playing for somebody else. Now you'll see the substitutions. Shaman pops it through there, and it's 34 to 7 Miami. So the Dolphins are rolling easy today in this one. And with a minute 24 left in the ball in the uh, third quarter, rather, 34 7 Miami. Zachary Dixon is deep for Baltimore. Miami rolling 34 to 7. Zachary Dixon in the middle. Drive kick goes out of bounds. Von Schaumann will have to kick it from five yards back. It would appear that Arch Schleister is going to be the new quarterback for uh, Baltimore. He's got his helmet on. I saw Mike Pagel on the sidelines limping a little bit. He didn't have his helmet on, so we'll see the number one draft choice. He's really come on in the last couple of weeks. Uh, earlier in the season, Merle, they didn't think he was ever going to make it in the NFL. 
You know, he's such a great athlete. He was a great basketball player, a football player, track man in high school, came to Ohio State. In fact, Woody Hayes, uh, in recruiting, Schleister promised to put in a passing offense to accommodate him because Ohio State was run-oriented. In fact, I did the first game that Schleister played in at Ohio State. He had five interceptions, fumbled three times, and uh, it was just heartbreaking for him. But he hung in there, and then they uh, worked on their offensive patterns because being run-oriented, they finally they brought in an offensive coordinator into the next year, and Schleister's career started to blossom. From the 30 this time, Von Schaumann. Dixon comes up the field at the 16. Dixon out across the 40 to the 43. A 27-yard return by Zachary Dixon, Steve Potter made the tackle with help from Charles Bowser, and Art Schleister comes on, and the crowd responds. Schleister, 6'2", 210 pounds, 12 out of 27, one interception, no touchdowns, and his brief work for the Baltimore Colts this year. He's got some mechanic problems in throwing the football, Merle, and got to work on him if he wants to play in this league for a long time. Play action by Schleister. Fires away over the middle. At the 49-yard line, a reception by Tim Sherwin. And Ernest Rowan is there to make the tackle. One thing you talk about mechanics, Mike Hafter, uh, watch the way he releases the ball from the shoulder. Almost a side armor. He's got to get the ball up in the air. He has a little flick in his wrist that's a, like a hitch in a baseball swing. And they've got to get him to get that ball up in the air so that it doesn't get that hitch with the, with the wrist. Wasn't then John Hewitt's problem in the pros? Yes, it was. You can't throw sidearm. These guys are all 6'7", 6'8", 6'9". You'll throw it right in their teeth. Gain of seven, second down three. Schleister on the draw, going to McMillan, the fullback, for the first down at the 44-yard line of Miami. Ernest Rowe, number 55, stops the play. We're down to 19 seconds to go in the third quarter. Miami leading 34 to seven. We have an injured Baltimore Colt. It would appear to be Ken Huff, the right guard, the eight-year veteran from North Carolina. So we'll take a timeout here with the 16 seconds to play in the third period in Baltimore. And it's the Miami Dolphins 34, the Baltimore Colts. I believe Terry Crouch has come on to replace him. Schleister with a first down outside the 40-yard line of Miami. Here comes the blitz. And the whistle stops play as Blackwood was coming with a safety blitz. Time ran out in the quarter before he got the snap off. So Arch Schleister will start again going the other way in just about a minute or so. That's the end of the third quarter. And the score of the Miami Dolphins, 34. And the Baltimore Colts, 7. But let's see what the officials are going to have to say here. start until the snap of the ball and then he fired the gun Merle and he wasn't supposed to. Who did he hit? <laughs> so we've got uh, the end of we've got the end of the third quarter officially. Arch Schleister on the sideline. Miami leads at 34 to 7. We'll be back at the uh, Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. He's got a new ankle tape job. Now we go to the fourth quarter and Schleister running and finally throwing down to about the 32 yard line. The reception made by Tim Sherwin the tight end. A gain of eight, it'll be second and two. I'll explain to you why the gun went off. On an injury timeout, when the injury is cleared, the clock starts, not on the snap of the ball. So they didn't get the ball snap. He fired the gun. Quarter was over. You want to talk about sidearm? That was, that was almost underhand. Bob Brzezinski covering Sherwin, the tight end, second down two. in Ohio State history. Holds virtually every school record at Columbus, Ohio. Schleister cranks it up, throws it down there for his fullback, Randy McMillan, and it's intercepted. It's intercepted. It is indeed. It is picked off by the Miami Dolphins by Don McNeil and brought back up across the 20 to about the 23-yard line. 
to say anything too bad about that throw, but when you got him wide open like that, drill the ball down there. Give the guy a chance for a touchdown. Schleister tried to put a little touch on it. He had McMillan wide open. And he tried to loft it up and drop it over the top. And there's the play by McNeil. He played the wide receiver, made the great catch. Now nobody touches him, so he can get up and run. Baltimore standing around watching him, and he brings it all the way back to the 24-yard line. Not a very good throw by Schleister. So David Woodley's back on the field again. We're in the fourth quarter. Miami with the ball at the 23-yard line. Don't need Stock to hand off. You need him to throw the football, and they've got a big enough lead now where Stock can stay warm. Woody Bennett, the lone setback. That's Bennett. Woody puts his head down, bangs his way out across the 25 to about the 27. Barry Cross, 55, the linebacker for Baltimore on the stop. Don Shula resting with a comfortable 34-7 lead. I guess he never rests, though, really. No. He's already thinking ahead to next week, though. So the Dolphins will not really know what kind of... Uh, advantage they're going to have on the home field until after the Raider game today. Here's the third quarter look at the statistics. 368 yards for the Colts total offense, 292 for the Dolphins, but the Dolphins have a whopping lead. Woody Bennett, and Bennett is shy of the 30, as Kim Anderson, 26, the free safety, is up to make the tackle. Woody Bennett on the carry. Woody signed as a free agent in 1980, has been in and out of the uh, Dolphin uniform, is just activated, 6'2", 225 pounds. He's leaving the field now. Had a big year in 1980, then hurt his ankle severely, was on injured reserve for a while. Shula knew that he could play. He just had to get over that injury, and it was a bad one. With third down five, Vigorito is in and Rose is in. And it gives Miami the all-out passing formation in the shotgun. Inside handoff, though, to Nathan. A little trickery here. shotgun they're thinking pass now watch the footwork well there he left one guy standing in his tracks here comes number two as Burroughs can't make the tackle Nathan stays on his feet gets a big game he's Woody tricky Bennett. Woody Bennett is back and you know you can always expect Don Shula to just change the pattern a little bit somewhere along the line well Franklin's giving him a nice afternoon he deserves a rest because he'll get a lot of work in the playoffs Woodley to the far side completing it to Daryl Harris. He's out of bounds to the 46. Derry catch it and the coverage. First down for Miami. On Daryl Harris, seven-year veteran from New Mexico. This is the safe kind of pass you throw. You don't want to get one picked off and get Baltimore back in this football game. Throw on first down when they don't expect it. Tony Nathan comes in. Nat Moore comes in. Cepelo goes out for Miami. 11 minutes, 48 seconds remaining as Don Schuller and the Dolphins lead the Colts 34 to 7. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we 
we've got third and long, especially when they know they'll go to the shotgun. They've already tried to draw on them once, and it works, so a pass is definite here. Looper's now in. He's a wide up. Woodley throwing complete at the 30-yard line. A hit put on by Ken Anderson on the receiver, Darrell Harris. And it's a first down for the Miami Dolphins. Nice, safe throw. Darrell Harris wide open. Now watch him on the sidelines. I don't think he ever gets his feet down, but I'll explain the rule if he doesn't. He is inbounds when he catches it. He is knocked out of bounds by the cornerback, and he didn't have both feet down, but that is a legal reception. If you're hit up in the air and then pushed out of bounds by the defender, the ball is ruled a legal catch. That pickup gives Harris four catches for 83 yards for the day. Hardy in motion. Bennett makes the cut down to the 25-yard line for a gain of five. The second and five coming up, Donnell Thompson, number 99. The defensive left hand comes up to make the stop on Woody Bennett. One thing about Bennett, he's not shot. <laughs> he puts that head down. He's going to get everything he can for you, 225 pounds. One of the things that Don Shula likes is the runner that runs north and south. Gets his shoulders square to the line. You've got a better chance of breaking tackles. And that's why he's always like Bennett. Second and five on the 25 of Baltimore. Hardy in motion the other way. Bennett, no place to go. They just ran the same play the other way. This time, Bennett loses a couple of yards. Fletcher Jenkins, 94, the rookie defensive right end from the University of Washington, stops the play for the Baltimore Colts. It'll be third down, eight coming up. Oh, oh. Oh, Miami will love to hear this score. San Diego beats the Raiders. Miami gets the home field advantage throughout the playoffs, and they're leading 3-0. But Erska kicked a 27-yard field goal. There's 4-0-7 going in the first quarter in that game. Don't you know the Dolphins will run to the radio or the television set to hear that one? Inside handoff. Ball carried down to the 22-yard line by Tony Nathan. Mary Krauss stopping the play. Make that uh, big arena. the tackle for Baltimore. It'll be fourth down, about two and a half, as Tom Bigarito goes to the sideline. 8.33 to play in this game. Miami with a very comfortable 34-7 lead. No field goal here, Merrill. They don't need a point differential now. That's not going to make any difference. They won't try to run it up on the Colts. They have to play this team twice every year. You know Don Shula has great admiration for Frank Cush. through the intricacies of investing makes them a breed apart. Earl Harmon and Mike Hafner with you in Baltimore. We have eight minutes, five seconds left to play in the game. Baltimore has just stopped a Miami drive, but Miami's got the big lead, 34-7. Schleister trying to throw the ball, has it blocked right back in his face, incomplete. And there again, as Bishop had the rush on, there again is what we were talking about, about Schleister throwing off the shoulder. I could not throw a sidearm when a guy like Richard Bishop, who's right up around 6'5", is in your face. Take a look here. The ball does not get up in the air. He, just, he let it. It didn't. I don't even think he even hit it. Slipped out of his hand. Second down and 10. The ball.
let this happen. I don't care if it's a rookie quarterback. You've got to protect his backside on a roll, and Schleicher had no chance. Not his fault. Some back or alignment did not pick up an outside blitzer. It's first down and goal to go. The ball is on the Baltimore Colt five-yard line. And David Hum is now in at quarterback for the Miami Dolphins. And Art Schleicher is asking why didn't he blow his whistle before he ran that train over me. So David Hum, the left-hander, is now in. Now check that. That's Jensen. Thank you, Park. They skipped right over Strzok. Went to the third stringer. Is carrying the ball. David Hum is on the Baltimore sideline. Had Hum on my mind. I guess I've been looking for him all day. But Schleister played ahead of him today. That is Jim Jensen, the second year man from Boston University. He's 6'4, 212 pounds. Has he been in this year? David Hum? No, Jensen. I don't think he's got any stats. <laughs> Second down, goal to go. Makes his pitch. Taken by Rich Diana. Diana at the goal line. Fumble out of the end zone. And it is a touchback. That's right, Baltimore gets the ball on the 20-yard line. So the Baltimore Colts, when that ball went out of the end zone, the touchback gives the ball to the Colts out of the 20. Got a timeout. Seven minutes, seven seconds left to play in this ball game. The Dolphins are leading 34 to seven, and will return after this. Quarterback in Baltimore today, especially maybe, if they don't protect your backside on the blitz. Maybe uh, Schleister will let David Hum come in and finish after all for Baltimore. <laughs> I would if I were him. Schleister. About the 22, possibly the 23. Loose ball. But I believe the ball is blown dead at the 23. Brzezinski thought he had a fumble and he was going to run it in for a touchdown. Bowser made the hit. He's got a touch. Then you're down. Let's see what happens on Schleister. Again, tremendous pressure. Now he's going to run. And does the knee go down before the ball comes out? The knee is down. Ball comes out. Good call. We've got an injury. 6.50 to play in the game. The Dolphins led at halftime, 17-7. Lead now, 34-7. We'll return after this. All 77, A.J. Dewey. Watch the forearm and the belly. And Dixon's going to go down, 31, right there. Right to his knees, he was hurt. On second and eight, the Colts go to the run. And Cleveland Franklin carries out across the 30 for a first down at the 31. 72, Richard Bishop, with help from William Judson, makes the tackle. That's the final scores for you now. Pittsburgh defeated Cleveland 37 to 21. Both in the playoffs. And Tampa Bay defeats the Chicago Bears coming from behind. And that one to win at 26-23 on a Bill Capisi field goal at 33 yards. Tampa Bay's in the playoffs. Chicago is not. Franklin. Franklin to the 34. Second down, a long seven coming up. Dixon's back in. He wasn't hurt that bad. 31, there he is. Matt Boza brings a play in from the sideline for the Baltimore Colts, who trail 34 to 7. It's been a long season for Frank Choice. The first of what I'm sure is going to be a lot of seasons here in Baltimore, though. I know Baker, who's now in as a linebacker for Miami. I know there's some Colt fans down in Miami, and both Merle and I want to say, just wait. Jackie Sherrill, as that pass falls incomplete, Jackie Sherrill went from Pittsburgh to Texas A&M. He took a couple of poundings this year, and he said later, I want to tell all the opposition, get your licks in now because we're going to be awesome. Well, I don't know if the Colts are going to be awesome or not, but I'll tell you one thing, Frank Bush, I don't think there's any coach or any football follower in America who will, does not believe that he's going to build a winning program. He's going to have there. to help this quarterback, though. Watch this. There's no spiral. We call this a duck in the game. Without your uh, shotgun, you can shoot those ducks being thrown. 
Schleister under pursuit on third and eight. Sidearms the ball to the 39-yard line. Incomplete. Intended for Franklin. Coverage by William Judson, the right quarterback, number 49, out of South Carolina State. It is fourth down for the ball of our coach. Schleister's going to learn how to throw in the NFL. They're going to have to protect him a little bit better. They've been standing on his toes all afternoon. Tom Figueroa goes back for the Miami Dolphins. And we've got a whistle stopping everything. As the Baltimore Colts call a timeout. Only had 10 men on the field. That's something that Frank Cush cannot tolerate. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. 5.05 to go in the game. Miami leads 34-7. On the uniform, but now he is warming up in earnest on the sideline as when throwing to Pagel. So let's see what happens when Baltimore gets the ball again. As Ron Stark pucks it away, it's fielded on the 26-yard line and brought back upfield. Eddie uh, Tom Vigarito on the return and a 40-yard punt, a six-yard return. The ball will be marked on the 38-yard line. So Tom Vigarito, the all-purpose back. I like that guy. He, he does it all, as you said. If he'd have caught a touchdown pass today, to hit for the cycle in two straight years. Jim Jensen will be the quarterback. Rich Diana and Woody Bennett are the running backs for Miami. All of the 38-yard line. Woody Bennett. Out across the 40 to the 42. Gain of four, it'll be second down, six. Don Shula would like nothing better in about a four minute, 45 second drive. Get this one over with, with his second teamers in there and get ready for the playoffs next week. And also go back and watch that San Diego LA game to find out who wins. San Diego hit three to nothing on an early field goal by Rob Benerska. Second down. Raiders have just tied that game. Eddie Hill. Eddie Hill across midfield for a first down to the 44-yard line. And Johnny Cooks has to make the tackle. Gain of 13 yards and a first down for the Dolphins. The ball has been put back at the 45. So it's Raiders three and San Diego three. Chris Barr with a 22-yarder. That's going to be that's going to be a battle all afternoon, bro. Can you believe? Uh, no, I know you can't do it. So, can you imagine a low-scoring game in that? Uh, no, in that one? No. no. There may be 60 more points before. We... First down to the 45-yard line of the Colts. Rich Diana is in the game. Woody Bennett gets the call. Does he take a pop at the line of scrimmage? Johnny Cooks and Donnell Thompson. And Thompson put 6'4", 254 pounds of hit into the ball carrier. Colts, four turnovers. Dolphins, one. The two tacklers you mentioned there, the key to the future of the defense of the Colts. Cook's a great player out of college, Mississippi State. Donnell Thompson, the draft choice, number one, two years ago. Those two will be the cornerstone that Chris builds his defense from. Vince Heflin is split wide to the left side. Second down, 11. Handoff goes to Rich Diana. Former Yale star carries. On the sweep, gets about two, possibly three yards. Rich Diana on the carry. Who said the Ivy Leaguers couldn't play, huh? What do you have? What grade point average do you have? About a 3.8 or 9, something like that? Uh, medical biology or one of those very difficult... It wasn't recreation. No. Third down, seven. You saw Mark Duper, 85, a rookie from Northwestern State of Louisiana. He does a 4-2-40. Duper comes split wide to the right. I don't have to tell you what his nickname is. Super duper. Serious, folks. Jensen pumps once, throws it back over the middle, and it's incomplete. Eddie Hill coming out of the backfield was the target. And it's fourth down for the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins leading it 34-7. I 
said one of the stalwarts on defense for a long time here will be Johnny Cooks, the number one draft choice. Makes a nice play on the back on the backfield. Hill didn't have a chance when Cooks wrapped him up. Tom Orris to do the punting. Bruce Hardy, who does everything, snaps on the long uh, snaps. Close, 38 9 average. Goes to the corner. And it is fielded on a fair catch by Matt Boozer. He dropped the ball. That makes it fair game. That's right. He can be hit. A minute 54 seconds to go. A 33 yard punt and no return. And we'll have the timeout for the two minute warning with a minute 54 seconds left on the clock. The score of the Miami Dolphins, 34, the Baltimore Colts, 7. Now here comes another of those fantastic finishes. And the score, the Dolphins have this one all wrapped up and then hope for the home field advantage all the way through the playoffs. That game on the West Coast, which is so important to the Dolphins and their fans, tied at three that game down in the second quarter in San Diego. The Dolphin fans will be able to start getting tickets tomorrow for their first playoff game. Arch Schleister still the quarterback as the Baltimore Colts go to the running play, move the ball out to about the 12-yard line. Burn then Herger stopping Cleveland Franklin. Minute 40 left, second down five. Schleister comes to the near side, completing this pass. Zachary Dixon out of the backfield and he runs all over the place and gets maybe a yard. He'll go without the huddle. Golden Walker stopping the play. Then at 20 seconds left. Charles Conanini, Ron Thomas, Roy Hicks, John Schneider have helped us to the booth today. Our thanks to them for identifications and statistics. Colts go to the run, trying to get that first down. Bowser making the hit on Cleveland Franklin. They get the first down, the ball at the 20. First and 10, Baltimore. This is really a hurry up offense. And they're trying to get whatever they can, but they trail by 34 to seven. Mike Kozlowski covering Buza. When you're trailing by 27, it seems kind of silly to run the hurry up offense, but Arch Schleister gets a chance to practice it. He hadn't seen it all year. You gotta make something out of nothing when you can. That's what Frank Cush was saying. I mean, last week in San Diego, when they took such a pounding, he played everybody. He said, "I got to find out who can really play and how they react in certain situations." Second and ten, Schleister to the top completes this one to Dixon coming out of the backfield, and Dixon is brought down to the 26. Mike Kozlowski, number 40, the free safety, making the hit on Zachary Dixon, and we've got a timeout call now for. Baltimore to stop the clock with a third down coming up with three yards to go. And 44 seconds remaining in the game. Art Schleister's going to have a long offseason, Merle. He's got a lot of things to work on. He's got to learn to work on them, too. It's, his work habits, according to Frank Cush, have uh, not been there because he's always been an excellent athlete. And he could always overcome everybody. But when you get to the National Football League, everybody's good. There are no uh, players that don't belong here. They usually get moved along. So he's going to have to improve his work habits, and they will give him a chance to be an NFL quarterback. People who have made this telecast possible today, Ted Nathanson, the coordinating producer of NFL Football NBC. Jenny Seif has been our producer today. Rocky Guns, our director. Arnold Rand, technical director. John Gallagher, our associate director. Kenny Agard, operations producer. And all these folks have been involved in football today and it's a happy new year from NBC Sports Mike Hafner yours truly Merle Harmon as we wind down this game with 44 seconds left to play the Colts to the run with Cleveland Franklin the fullback he's out across the 30 for a first down at the 32 Schleister, straight drop is going to be nailed, and he gets pulled, and the ball is picked up, and 
the Miami Dolphins have it on a fumble because the arm wasn't going forward. Burn Den Herger, the big Iowa hog farmer, at 6'6", 252 pounds, picked that ball up. He had visions of being a fullback. And you talk about finding out what the NFL is all about. How about that hit on Schleister? Oh, a helmet right on the sternum. One of the problems, no protection for the quarterback in Baltimore, no matter who it is, and Schleister finds out. There goes the chance for the touchdown. We're down 22 seconds to go, and Miami will run out the clock. Ron Hester, the linebacker, was blitzing Schleister. Retirement to help the Dolphins this year. They needed him. He came back. He picked that ball up. Miami's ball at the 10 yard line with 22 seconds left to play in this game. And the Oakland Raiders on a touchdown from Jim Plunkett to Frank Hawkins have taken a 10 to 3 lead over the San Diego Chargers. That game now in the second quarter. 9 09 into the second quarter. Don Shula didn't want to see that score. He's, he's calling for San Diego so they can have the home field playoffs all through the playoff round. It'll be first and goal to go for the Miami Dolphins, leading by a score of 34 to 7 with only 22 seconds remaining in the ballgame. And Don Schuller will take his Miami Dolphins back home, getting ready for their first assignment in the playoffs. They'll either play on the 8th or the 9th, depending on the outcome of the other games today. And the lineup for the playoffs. Miami to the run. Dixon. Another uh, hill. Nobody's going to stop the clock, Merle. I got a feeling that's the last one. Hill, the last carry, and the Dolphins let the clock roll down. And Don Schiller. to the winner on this one by a score of 34 to 7 an easy ball game for the miami dolphins and they're playoff bound and we'll be back Rose, the linebacker Brooks